In this last video for the chapter, we're going to look at 8.8, .8, which is strengths of covalent bonds. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the stability and then strength of the bond and how that then relates to what we call bond enthalpy. So the first thing is that the stability of a bond, what, uh, how well it stays together, is related to the strength of the bond. And the more stable it is, the stronger it is. Because that means it doesn't really want to fall apart. It wants to stay together, which means that it is stronger. It's more stable that way. Remember, things more stable have lower energy and do not want to separate. Um, the energy required to break the bond will tell us also how stable it is. If it requires more energy to break the bond, then that means it's more stable. So that then is going to tie into what we call bond enthalpy. Okay, bond enthalpy, where enthalpy is going to be a new word for us, okay, that is your heat released or absorbed, and that is the amount of energy that is required to break a bond into its gaseous elements, meaning just that particular element in the gas phase. So a bond enthalpy is the amount of energy that is required to break the bond in, apart. So let's look at the example here. So for many bonds, we use average values for the bond enthalpies because there is more than one of the bonds in the molecule. The heat of atomization, meaning decomposing into its atoms, okay, the word atoms in there, is equal to the sum of the bond enthalpies for all four CH bonds. So to get a single bond, you need to average it. So these four CH bonds get broken, and we end up with carbon and four hydrogens and you average those values. So 1660 is for all four of them, and then we average it and we have a one bond. All right, now if we look at what's called bond enthalpies and enthalpies of a reaction. Bond enthalpies can be used to estimate the enthalpies of a reaction in which bonds are broken and new bonds are formed. That's how we get a chemical reaction. You have to have new things made. Okay, we have our table there for average bond enthalpies. These are numbers that you will always be given, either in a table form or in the problem itself. These are numbers you not have to memorize. Those are just the values that it would be for to break one of these bonds. Okay, so then we can estimate whether a reaction is going to be endothermic or exothermic. Endothermic means you can put energy in, so it's going to be positive value. Endothermic, you get energy out, so it's less than zero and it's a negative value. Okay. Um, Delta H for a reaction then is the sum, that's what that sigma is, of the bond enthalpies of the broken bonds minus the bond enthalpies of your bonds that are formed. Okay, the reaction pictured at the right okay, is exothermic. And they're ex exothermic because the bonds in the product are stronger than the bonds in the reactants. Okay, if you look at this picture, here are the bonds in the reactants. Okay, we have methane and chlorine. Here's my methane, the CH4, there's my chlorine. Now to make the product, which is CH3Cl and HCl, we have to break these bonds. So here we have my reactants, okay, and we break these bonds. We have to put energy in to break them, pull them apart so my enthalpy goes way up. Now I take one of the H's off, I break apart the Cl's so that I can then make the CCL and the HCL. The H then bonds with one of the chlorines. The chlorine then goes on to the carbon, and we end up then with our products. When we get lots of energy out, then when those rebond, okay, and we see a very low energy here. Now when we look at this, notice how the reactants are higher up than my products, so that means that this is exothermic. You lost energy here. Okay, energy got out. If you want to know the actual numbers that go along with this, okay, if I want to figure out the actual delta H, remember we take the break minus the form, bonds that are formed, okay? So the bonds that I'm going to break, I'm going to break a CH bond. I'm also going to break a CL-CL bond. I'm going to form a CCL bond and I'm going to form an HCl bond. So you take all of these energies and we add them up. So the CCl has an energy value or enthalpy value of 242. So we take and we add that to the CH that we're going to break and CH is uh, 
413. We take those, we add them up together, and we subtract them from the ones we're going to form. And the CCL again, oh, I'm sorry, so the CCL is 328. And we're going to add that to the HCL, which is 431. We get our value then of negative 104, and the unit is kilojoules. Okay, it is important to note that volume of are derived from gas element molecules, and they are average values. Instead of just breaking or forming what I need, you could also break everything and then form everything. It would just be a little bit higher of a number. You're going to have, have things that are going to cancel out on either side because some things just get broken and then reformed again back again. So looking at the example here, categorize the ones that get broken and the ones that get formed, add up the numbers and subtract. So looking then at your answer, the broken ones are the CH, the CC, CC, and the O double bonded. O2 is O double bonded to O. We're going to break six CH bonds. Okay, three on the right side, three on the left side. We're going to break one carbon-carbon bond, and we're going to break the OO bond. We then form two COs, okay? But it's not two, it's actually two of those, so it's four. And then we're going to have the same thing here. We break two OH bonds, but actually it is six because there's three of each one that gets formed. So the same thing on the left-hand side here. It should be seven halves of the OO. Because really, you don't even have one full mole. We take all the numbers off the chart, we subtract them, and we should get negative 1,415.5 kilojoules. The negative means that it is exothermic. The next thing you have bond enthalpy and bond length. Okay, the shorter the bond length, the higher the bond enthalpy. Because that then means that I have to put more energy in to break it, very similar to lattice energy here. And so the shorter the bond, the harder that is. And we see then there the average bond lengths for the different ones. And we should remember that carbon-carbon is the shortest when it is triple bonded and the longest when it is single bonded. So then what I want you to do is go ahead and try that long practice problem. All right, looking at this practice problem, it's a cumulative problem. Okay, you start out with phosgene. You need to figure out the molecular formula. So we take the percentages, we divide it by the molar mass, got the mole numbers. We realize that the molar mass of COCl2, which is the empirical, is also the molecular because they are the same mass weight or molar mass. Um, then it wants to know the three Lewis structures for the molecule. And we're going to figure out the formal charges and the bond enthalpies. We figure it out from B here that this is the best structure based on formal charges because they are all zeros versus one pluses and one minuses. And when we look at the reaction, okay, we've got carbon monoxide, CO, plus Cl2 makes COCl2. We draw them out because one of the few times that carbon does not have four bonds. You look at what you're breaking. You're breaking a triple bond of carbon oxygen and a single bond of, of chlorine chlorine and you are making two carbon chlorines and one carbon oxygen double bond. We get the values, remember it's broken minus formed, and we get a negative 141 kilojoules.